Welcome back. We are starting production on the tops because my fitting for the large shirt that I did the other day with my friend worked out really well. I'm always shocked when I do a fitting and it works out. I'm like, oh, wow, okay. Didn't think that would happen, but this is good. I didn't film any of it, but I do have some reference photos that I took for myself that I'll share on the screen so you can see how it went. It was very rough mock-up. I had some pinning like here in the shoulder. No, what did I do? I pinned it smaller than the shoulder and the side so it was like fitting like an M because I was just wanting to see between an L and an M if it was also following the shape of her bust line. All was good. The bow position also, like the waist, the second one in the middle was sitting right below, which is like where your bra line goes. So that would be nice if you want to wear a bra, it would cover. And then the top bow was sitting a bit higher, which actually was good because then you're not like busting with cleavage, you know, and like falling out of it. So the three bow positions ended up being really good. And success, I would say, because that went so well, I did already adjustments and I'm going to start production today which is like i can't believe we're already here now i do have my stuff absolutely everywhere and i was working on these bags last night i just had a couple more blush bags to sew i already have them mostly ready i did like all the straps yesterday and the bias binding so satisfying i'm just gonna quickly pop these all together just to start clearing up my space so we can like start with the fun part which is also the start of like so much sewing for me <laughs> Nice. The start and end of my bias is so clean. Like, come on, that looks nice. Every time I sew another one, it just keeps getting better, which is a good thing. I just completed the flower bags. They need the brand labels on them, but I'm just gonna add them later. And as I was sewing one of them, I noticed a little stain. So I'm just gonna leave this off to the side as like um, a second. I just call it second, cause maybe one day I'll have like a sample sale. I'm kind of sell things that are either samples or that have little flaws on them. Just because I don't wanna sell something that has a stain right on the front. So I'll leave it for now, but at least it's made for a future sample sale. That's the plan, but I have three bags, three blush bags. For the top, I wanted to actually do one more grade, two more grades. I wanna make a size extra small and extra large. And oh yeah, this paper, last video, I said I just got it and wasn't sure about it because it's so thin and transparent, but really it's my favorite. I love it. It's so good. It doesn't like curl up so crazy and it's so easy to trace over things but also to match up my seams because I can see through the piece. I really like it cuts really well. Surprise, surprise. It's my favorite paper. So I will be ordering this again when it's done. But I want to just quickly make it extra small and extra large. Once all the sizes are cut, I'm going to start organizing the fabric and I think I want to make well, I'm aiming to make three of each size, minimum two for sure, like there has to be two options, but ideally I want to make three of each size. Three, I feel like it's just like a good option for each size because one you can right away rule out and then you still have two, you know? So if you work in design anywhere, you always know that you present your client or anyone with three options, three to five. Any more than five is overwhelming. Three is like a sweet little spot. So we're gonna do that.
did want to say we reached a thousand followers. Thank you for following me on my little journey, my little sewing journey. But I think it's crazy. There's like a thousand people who subscribed to my channel, which is amazing. It feels really good. But like I said before, if I reach a thousand subscribers, I'm going to invest in little mics or something like a better audio thing for my phone. I am looking into it. I haven't gotten it yet, but I'm looking into it and I just want to make sure I get the right one. So it's coming. I swear that I follow through on my promises. <laughs> to be completely honest, I wanted to skip grading and go straight to the fun part of organizing the fabrics, but I had to talk myself into just get the grading done. Well, I still remember how I'm doing it all because it's just a lot of math and I want to make sure I do it right. We're getting there. My lead in the pencil finished and I just had the, oh, the sound, the scratch of the pencil. Oh, okay. I just, I don't know why I did that to myself. Worst sound ever. Okay, center print, done. Side print. I finally finished all my grading. So these are all my pattern pieces for all the sizes, extra small to extra large. And now is the fun part. We get to actually start planning fabrics. I don't know how much fabric each one takes. I think I'll do like a rough layout of one because it also depends how wide fabric is. Okay, this is the first stack of washed fabrics okay this one looks pretty average like this wide is pretty average this is not enough for one so i can only get one center piece in there this is the full other side but i made a shirt in this what you saw two weeks ago and if basically i can only get one shirt in this much fabric i'm just gonna measure this and see like one meter, let's give one meter 40. Let's give a meter and a half. Let's just round it up. Meter and a half, basically more or less of each top. Oh, I, ha oh, I have some other fabrics we can also use. I don't know, do we like this? I'm really not sure. Could be interesting. I think it's like my last kind of choice. Does anyone want a gray cotton one? Kind of boring. Turns out I have a lot of pink. I have this pink one. How much is this? Oh yeah, that's good enough. Okay, this is a pink. This is a pink. These are a pink. This is also a pink. Green, blue, floral, and kind of neutral. Okay, I think this is better. Grouping it kind of by like color ways. Then we have this one. This is another gingham. Okay, so we have enough plaids. We have this one, this one, this one, and this one. So each size can have their own plaid, I think is kind of fair. And I also have this. Oh, I also have this one. Again, a pink floral. Then we have some whites. I think every size should have like a white or like neutral, which I guess is from that pile. This I wanted to turn into a top. I don't know if I'll have enough pieces for one though, to be honest. This might have to be a flower bag, but that's something you can test out. Oh yeah, I totally didn't mention this at all, like on any of my socials. Like the other day, this lady, I used to go to her for laser hair removal, but she messaged me saying she's cleaning out her mom's apartment. I don't know for what reason, but she was. And she had all this old sewing stuff. She had a sewing room and had like so many vintage tablecloths and sewing supplies. And she basically just offered them to me for free she's like i just need to get rid of it like do you want it and i was like yes always say yes so i have a few vintage tablecloths and they're amazing like the fabric is so special it's this green kind of plaid it has some nice colorful stitching into it i thought that would be quite fun for the spring and summer kind of cute then there i think this is a christmasy one so maybe not it feels pretty christmasy it's like very like holly or something i don't know what i'll do with that quite yet but i don't think it's very summer appropriate <laughs> then we had this gorgeous blue one isn't it so pretty i don't know if i want to cut it up because i love it so much but i need a nice tablecloth for when i do markets the idea of flowers and like floral bags i don't want to cut it up 
it's too special <laughs> right now to cut it up I have to show you what else this lady gave me. It's like this little drawer thing full of notions and scissors and stuff. I have to show you. So many buttons, thread. And then in here is like, oh, rolling away. I don't really know what this is. Like elastics, um, bias tape, some random gold fabric. But the amount of elastic in here is wild. Really cool though. And then at the bottom, more thread. Like this is thread. Look how much thread. Actually, this ribbon has wire in it, so it's like really bendy. And I instantly thought I want to recreate the Molly Goddard bow hat for winter. And I already know what beanie I want to attach it to, and it'll be so cute. <laughs> but isn't it so great? So many different types of thread. The button collection is just so good. Oh yeah, but these are the best things that I got. These like amazing shears. They're kind of dirty, so they just need a very good like oil, I think. And like a nice sharpening. I haven't even tested them out yet. Also these little ones. Like, how cute are they? So lovely. But this sewing magazine, it's like a Dutch sewing magazine. I found the date before. It was 2002. Yeah, here. Uh, June 6, 2002. I love it, it's 20 years old, but it has sewing patterns in it like this. You trace over it with tracing paper, which I got. This is tracing paper. The lay plans for everything. It's so fun. I'll definitely need to make a video about making one of these projects because it's just so special. Can you make bikinis? Oh, you can make the little beach cover-ups. I've never actually used any of these sewing patterns before, so it'll be an adventure to like figure out what this is and how to do it. I just got stuck here looking at this magazine more thoroughly the past 20 minutes, but there's some amazing pieces in here. I have to show you. This is the first one, this long skirt, because I have such trouble finding maxi skirts that are actually maxi on me because my legs are kind of long, but this is nice. It's kind of simple. Panel skirt, and then I just make adjustments to the pattern that's already there i don't even have to make the pattern which is like half the battle and the top is cute oh the top has a center front zipper that's kind of nice this could be me i don't know if i'll wear that together but i do like them honestly i was thinking should i make some of these patterns from the book comment down below if you want me to make some of these patterns i feel like we can make it like a little series i'm not gonna sew them all I'm just saying that now because there's too many and I don't like all of them. I just want to make a handful. Okay, we're back to business with the fabrics. We need to get ourselves organized. Oh, where to start? Okay, let's start with this because there's less. And my general thought with using fabrics is because the shirt is quite versatile with the ties, I'm going to do the smaller ones in extra small because technically an extra small small could kind of wear this depending on how open you want the front. And then I'll do this as a large, extra large could kind of also wear this to keep it kind of balanced. Of course, I will always add a size chart on my website. I already have a size chart on my website that breaks down the flower bag sizes and also the jacket sizes. And I'll do that again with the top so you know like bust and waist I think I'm just going to add because the hip, it flares. So there's room for any type of hip. Okay, now we're getting into florals. Floral, I'm going to do extra small and large. This one is, feels like a polyester. It's not cotton, I don't think. What is it? 100% polymade. Yeah, this isn't breathable like in the least so i don't want to use it for a summer top because you would just like sweat so much so i'm gonna avoid that it needs something blue this has a very strong pink and green so we can add this into small i think i figured out all the fabric for each size like extra small everyone has kind of like a plaid a more like neutral and a floral so small medium large extra large this is a really beautiful white I think this is what it's gonna be but once I start cutting then we will solidify it and I might have extra fabric from some so we can like double but this is my rough draft of fabric but I'm just gonna take a photo of each one so I kind of have a plan I feel like such a um, what is it called gen x sticking photos with my ipad <laughs> but I just use the app procreate so I add the photo in and then I'll like make notes beside it 
it keeps me organized so that's what matters i don't want to be biased but currently i think medium is my favorite setup so far also what i got free from the other lady were these hangers now i think they're just like pant hangers that push together and open like this it's like a little alligator <laughs> But I usually always press my fabric all at once. And then I thought I could nicely hang it on these hangers. And I can just have all my pressed fabrics waiting to be cut nicely on my rolling rack. And I have so many. I have like 20 of these right now. I really can't wait to see how everything sews up. Because I feel like it just honestly changes it so much. Like sometimes it's hard to imagine what this will look like in the top. It always turns out so much better. And I just, oh, the final outcomes are just so good oh my goodness also oh, my friend introduced me to notion life-changing if you don't know what notion is it's like an organizational app she just came to work one time i work with her and she's like l i know you love organizing you need to check out notion and you need to try it you'll love it she was right I'm addicted, but I just thought I can add all of this organizational stuff for production into my Notion and keep track of everything. Like what's been cut, what fabrics for what size, what needs to be sewn, you know, like labels. Oh, this is going to be so fun. I love organizing. The more organized I can be, the more I enjoy the whole process and I just love checking off boxes. <laughs> I think I'm just going to start with the extra smalls and start ironing and just pressing all the fabrics and use my fancy new hangers to organize it all. Nice. Oh, this is nice. Look how nice it keeps my fabrics. Genius. For the rest of the night, I'm just gonna continue ironing and prepping all the fabrics. And again, thank you so much for getting me to a thousand subscribers. It feels really special, honestly. I just love giving you a little glimpse into a fashion design studio and how things are made and how exciting and fun it really is. Also, if you want to stay up to date, mostly with like releases and stuff, you can sign up to my newsletter down below. I usually only do like a month recap, but at the end of every month, it's also telling you what's coming in the next month. So maybe release dates or markets that I'm going to do. You also get 30 minutes early access to any drop or release that I do, just for you to know. Anyways, I'm gonna keep listening to my podcast and iron for the next several hours and I will see you next week.